coming up next, you'll have more of us, Velvet Revolver. Keep watching, I will kick your ass. I'm hanging out here with Velvet Revolver on the Headbangers Ball, their brand new CD, their debut CD, Contraband, is going to be in stores this Tuesday. Go and check that out. Now, you guys, in between Guns N' Roses and now, you all had uh, side projects. None were as highly anticipated as this. Are you feeling the pressure or, or what? Um, I, I wouldn't say there's... The, the anticipation level has been all sort of... More than anything, it's been a lot of hype because of who everybody is and Scott and all that kind of that kind of stuff, but when we got together, it was such a bonafide real thing that it just came out as just magic, you know, so it just happened. And we've just been out there doing gigs and put, made the record and we're putting that out just based on that's what we like to do. So it's not really a lot of pressure to us, yeah. even though the anticipation might be high on the public, you know. Right. And so now that we've been doing shows and stuff, everybody's like, oh, and all the hype gets erased and it's all about the band, so it's pretty cool. That's great. So tell us about the recording and the writing process. Um, you guys had songs prior to Scott joining up with you, correct? A few. Yeah, we, we had a, we had a ton of riffs and um, you know basic structures for songs. And when Scott came in, uh, he he gravitated towards certain riffs, certain riffs that you know he really liked the sound of, and it lended towards his vocal style. And then when af after Scott came in, we wrote probably about half the record with him okay. there in the room, and uh, you know finished the record up, got got in the studio, and knocked it out in about six weeks. Got it done pretty quickly. Cool. And what was great about when Scott came in, he was actually there with us in the rehearsal place, you know, and he, we'd be knocking out riffs, and he'd hear something, and he would, you know, ask us to stop and play it again. He, he'd immediately start singing a melody over it, and by the end of the day, we'd have a song, you know. Cool. So. All right, well, let's check out another Guns N' Roses video. This one rarely ever saw on uh, MTV or MTV2. Tell us real quick, though, Garden of Eden, how it came about. Right, so we, we had done a... The, the video shoot for yesterday is the video um, uh, and you know we had all the, the gear and the, and the crew and the cameras and everything there and we, we said what the hell it was about six in the morning let's shoot another video let's shoot for Garden of Eden and they used a single camera fisheye lens and we did the video in like two takes yeah we did about two takes this is early early morning you know usually videos take like 14 16 hours to make yeah. this one took about a half an hour cool well check it out Here this is are. rock and roll <laughs> Guns N' Roses Garden of Eden check it out yeah, Velvet Revolver is coming right back here on Headbangers Ball. We're still here hanging out with the fellas from Velvet Revolver here on Headbangers Ball. Now we're going to talk to Dave Kushner, the man. <laughs> How did you uh, hook up with these guys? Were you a big fan of STP and uh, Guns N' Roses or what? I was. Um... Slash have known since junior high, and wow. we went to high school and junior high together. Before I even started playing guitar, either one yeah. of us, actually. Really? Yeah, and I hadn't seen him in years, and he was playing in Duff's band. Okay. And I went to go see Duff's band play, and I was like, I know that guy, you know. So it was wow. really cool to see him, and he came down to the studio when we were looking for a guitar player, and just, you know, offered to help out until we found somebody, because <laughs> he was oh, a good friend great. of ours. And then never and left. Just, yeah, and we never actually <laughs> asked him to be in the band, so <laughs> he's just been hanging out. <laughs> At least my picture's on the record, so. No, he he brings something he brings something to the whole guitar thing you know as far as this band is concerned which is a, a multi-layer thing and it was really surprising the first day he walked in i gotten so used to playing with guitar players who play pretty much exactly how i play yeah. and it's just you know it's just a big mess and so he brought in this whole different thing so i was doing my trip he's doing his trip and then sonically it just sounds really cool that's amazing so you must be psyched to hear <laughs> yeah to hear that i mean it's you know i always get all goofy when I hear him <laughs> talk about me because you know it's like I remember oh sorry I remember when you know I was in high school watching him play you know before I started playing guitar so yeah. that's cool so you were in Wasted Youth now you used to always wear that shirt was that yeah. the shirt yeah that was the shirt it wasn't just a, a slogan no, it was a shirt. It was, it was the, the band. band. Yeah. Of course, the Which I always thought every There's time he says he was from Wasted Youth, band. that was really cool. Yeah. But I knew it was the band show. But anyways, we're going to see a Wasted Youth video right now. Do you want to tell us anything about it real quick? Yeah, this video, I my hair actually looks exactly like his and nothing like it looks now. So you got to look for a guy that looks like him. <laughs> and that's and, you. Uh, it was in our guitar player's backyard, and he okay. just watered it all day. So it was this huge mud pit. The rest was on the top of this CHP building. 
And this is actually awesome. shown on the original Headbangers Ball. Yes. So check it out. Here's Wasted Youth with a good day for hanging. Old school style. If you want a lot more bang with much larger balls on your Saturday night, keep watching Headbangers Ball. You're watching MTV 2's Headbangers Ball. <laughs> Here still with the revolver. Now, are you guys tired of people calling you a super group or what? Oh, man, why did you have to screw it up with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're over it. Yeah. yeah. And Scott's not here. Is it because he strongly dislikes no, I think me actually the Headbangers Ball? Because I'm really... He had a, you know what? He was a big fan of yours. Okay, cool. He was excited, but... But he's on a flight. It was his, his, he and his wife's anniversary last night. Okay. Cool. So, we like, his, we like him to save his voice, too, for the show. Kinda True. Like yours is going Otherwise, right it'll sound like <laughs> me. So, you guys, obviously, you're playing some STP songs, and we're about to see the video for uh, Sex, type, sex thing. type Thing. Now, tell us about when you were recording, I guess, uh, Robert and Dean from STP were right next door. Was that the first, weird? The first time that we were in the studio together doing uh, Set Me Free and uh, yeah, Money for the Italian Job, um, we were in the studio and I got this phone call. I said, you know, Dean and Robert are down in the studio, so you might want to call Scott and let him know and how do you guys want to deal with this? Yeah. So I got to the studio and I was like, all right, and Scott's going to be coming in right behind me. So we snuck Scott into the studio because we knew there were still some issues going some on. Tension. And so it was very tense and they didn't really talk. And I met uh, Robert for the very first time at the at the water fountain. And he's like, hey, I'm Robert from STP. And I was like, was a little uh, yeah. you know, anyway, and it was, it was uncomfortable. Then, so after that, um, we went in to actually make the record, and we're in the same studio, sharing the same lounge. <laughs> so finally, Scott. So went totally different yeah. studio. Yeah, oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, months and months when apart. You know? And then, and then uh, Scott and and Dean spoke, so that worked out good, and you know everything's cool. They and squashed the rock beef. Yeah, yeah the rock beef. It was yeah. a, li a little weird at first. Let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Feel like right. Axel walked in here right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna talk about that too. A little, a little bit later. We're not much. talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, let's check out a video from Stone Temple Pilots. Here they are with sex type thing. Lots more with Velvet Revolver in just a second, so stay tuned. <laughs> This year at the MTV Movie Awards, flip on the lights and let's... Welcome back to Headbangers Ball, Velvet Revolver is still here hanging out with me. Their debut album is coming out this Tuesday, it's called Contraband. How did you guys come up with that name also, by the way? Scott quick, came up with it. it. So Scott just came in and said, what do you think of Contraband? And they're like, cool. <laughs> That's so it was an easy decision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everything was pretty, you know, everything, one thing after the other with this, with this band. Slash had Revolver, okay. Scott had Velvet. So well, that's where the name together. Velvet Revolver came yeah. from, yeah. Okay. And Scott came up with Contraband. Oh, going real smooth, it. you know what I mean? It is. So is it is it great to be back on stage, you three together? Or it's what? insane. It's great. Better than ever, I think. Yeah, I, I think definitely we play better than ever, you know? Bring back and the, memories. And the vibe is... No, it's a whole a whole new thing. Yeah, that's, that's, there is, it's, it's a weird... energy than ever, man. Cool. The weird separation yeah. between then and now. It's like we're not really thinking about then, except for every time somebody brings it up. You know, everything's <laughs> yeah. really, everything's really in the now and sort of the present yeah. tense. Great. Right now. Cool. So you're playing GNR songs, and I uh, heard that there was an F Axel chant that you uh, quickly diffused. Do you want to tell us about that? I just, I don't, there's not much to tell you. They just, all of a sudden, I started hearing this. Uh, I think it was F Axel, and so I just said. Yeah, I don't think that's necessary. Yeah. You know, whatever. You know, something like that. It's very classy. So, do you, do you have any contact with him? At, I haven't talked to him since I quit. Okay. So, and I don't think Duffy. Nope. I don't think any of nope. us have. No, so, sir. I haven't talked to him either. I. Yeah, I you know what? All the time. I did. I ran, in, ran into him in a bathroom at the Standard Hotel in Los Angeles. We had a little talk. Really? But it wasn't wasn't great. But you know what? He showed cool. us a really good time at this gig. That's getting ready to come up here. Okay. MTV Rock and Rio. And this is your first. Yeah. That's first gig with us in front of 200,000 people. Wow. It's like, welcome to the band, Matt. Yeah, that was fun. That was a nice warm-up. <laughs> Sounds like it. All right, let's check it out. Guns N' Roses live from Rock and Rio with Mr. Brownstone. Velvet Revolver is still here, and we're about to play their debut video when the Headbangers Ball returns. Welcome back to Headbangers Ball, hanging out with Velvet Revolver. Go get their debut CD in stores too, this Tuesday. Contraband is the title. 
Now, I read that you guys had started this band to get, you know, back to the pureness of music. I mean, were you jaded by the record industry or, or the scene in general? Or, 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 like, what scene do you consider yourselves a part of at this I'd, point? I would say maybe a little bit jaded by the industry, just because of all the bad experiences we've had over the years. But uh, just really motivated to get together something that was what we all individually wanted to do, which is like a real hardcore rock and roll band, trying to find the right people to do it. Once Duff and Matt and I clicked the first time this, when this first started, that sort of brought this whole thing back to us. And then Dave came in, added something, and Scott came, and he was basically, as I said once before, the shot. And then there you had it, you know. I think uh, as far as like scene and like music genres and names of bands like new metal and rap rock and we're uh we're a rock and roll band cool unfortunately now i have a chance to become jaded by yes. the music industry, which is really a great experience these guys help me out you know with that so so <laughs> so we've got lots of war stories to spread out you know totally so on this tour are you seeing a lot of old faces or is it, you know, you a know, mixture of new fans that maybe missed STP or, or Guns N' Roses? There is a lot of that. Like, we rolled up on a gig um, in New York, for instance, and, um, you know, we kind of came around discreetly to the side of the venue, and uh, there was a line wrapped around a couple blocks, and, and I noticed how young everybody was. And yeah. in, like, t Toronto, it was... It was and like Slash and myself were walking down the street in New York the other day, and these, this guy came by, and he looked at us, he goes, hey, you're the dudes from Velvet Revolver. That was me and you. Yeah, you and me. That's you called me Slash. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> so that must have felt good. Did I say Slash? You yeah. did. Sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. Well, back I up. Like Bro, rewind. <laughs> no, it's just it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, anyways, but that must have felt. It could have been you noticed for <laughs> for, Rel for Velvet Revolver and not Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Cool. So we're gonna check out your uh, your video right now. Here it is, Slither. Slither. That was Slither off of Velvet Revolver's debut CD, Contraband. That's gonna be in stores this Tuesday. Anything you want to say about the video? Any stories from the shoot or anything? Not really. It was pretty I, painless. It was just one day shoot. We just went in, played the song a dozen times, and went home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't shot like some remote location or something. Uh, downtown LA in a basement. <laughs> They did try to look like Paris underground. Yeah. Okay. That was the concept, basically. <laughs> they right. did shoot some um, exterior stuff in Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Into Czechoslovakia. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, thank you so much, guys, for stopping by. It was an honor to interview you, and congrats on the new CD and the success of the tour and everything. I've enjoyed this. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. So, and don't forget to tune in uh, to MTV Satellite Radio on XM Radio every Sunday night. Now you can hear Headbangers Ball on the radio from 10 to midnight. Morbid Angel and Nora are going to be guests on Headbangers Ball next week. You won't see me because I'll be in Europe, but enjoy that. Till next time. Shoot it.